Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Turner, and I'm a software engineer at Uber and a maintainer on the Spire project. And today I'm excited to talk to you about some updates with the project that I'd like to share from the last time we got together at Production Identity Day in North America in November of 2020. So first I'd like to just share some statistics about the project as of early September this year. Uh, this is between last Production Identity Day and this September. So we've released 11 new versions of Spire in that time. We've deployed out 49 new features into the repo and 59 bug fixes and improvements and a total of 339 pull requests were merged in the last year. And this is just awesome. This is like way up from last year. So it's super exciting to see the growth and momentum of the projects. And in total, we've had 48 contributors uh, over the past year. So that's really great. It's, that's also up from last year. So thanks everyone who has been active in the project and contributed uh, new pull requests, those who have filed issues. Um, you really drive the direction of the project uh, forward and we're really all appreciative of that. So I'd like to just highlight the folks who have contributed in the last year. Uh, these are all the GitHub users uh, who have committed something to the Spire repo since last Production Identity Day. So huge props to all these people and we really appreciate all your contributions and keep them coming. So this year we were really focused uh, on trying to release a 1.0 version of Spire. And a 1.0 version for us uh, as maintainers of the Spire project really signified the, a stable and secure release uh, that really uh, showed that the project solves a core use case that applies to many organizations in the software industry. And we felt like coming into this year, we had really found uh, a real momentum of the project and found that a lot of organizations were interested in Spire. And so we felt like the project was getting to a stable enough place to make this symbolic gesture, if you will, of 1.0 being the, the, the next release of Spire. So early this year, back in about February, we were considering trying to release 1.0. Um, in the meantime, we had actually um, commissioned a security audit of the project to just make sure that we didn't miss anything. Um, and it turns out there are a couple of vulnerabilities that were discovered as part of that security audit. And I'll talk a little bit about those uh, in a little bit. But uh, basically, once those vulnerabilities were reported, uh, we sort of had to reevaluate our direction and make sure that we were achieving the objectives that we had laid out for a 1.0 release. So back in March, we actually released uh, several versions of Spire to patch uh, some of the security vulnerabilities that we reported as part of the security audit. And that took place in March. Um, so in, in April, we were looking at all of the pending contributions, all the pull requests that were open. And we there were a lot of things that uh, folks from the community wanted to contribute. Uh, and we didn't want to hold those things up artificially just to try to release something that was called 1.0. Uh, so we, we decided to merge most of those changes into a couple of point releases on the 0 0.12 uh, re major release branch. And those uh, constitute the 0 0.12.2 and 0 0.12.3 releases in April and May of this year. And once we, once we had time to let those uh, releases kind of um, be, be out in the wild for a little bit and give users an opportunity to use them and report any issues, uh, we, we felt like around July, uh, it was a good time to, to actually declare this project a 1.0. And so we actually did release a 1.0.0 version of Spire in July of this year. So it's a huge accomplishment for uh, the project and we're just excited to see where it goes from here and uh, hope that it kind of fuels the adoption for 
the next wave of users who might potentially find uh, benefits from adopting Spire. So earlier I mentioned that there were these security releases that came out earlier this year. And I'd like to just kind of talk about what prompted those releases. So we actually commissioned uh, a security audit by a firm uh, to a firm called Tier 53. Uh, and they're a really great reputable um, security research firm. And they started looking into the project around February of this year. And they did a full like in-depth white box analysis of the project. And so they were really looking through the source code and all different kinds of uh, potential attack vectors. And uh, in general, the, the project was found to be uh, pretty well designed um, in their words, uh, there, but there were a couple of vulnerabilities that they found. Uh, and this was all focused on the 0 0.12.0 release, which was uh, the latest release at the time that they were um, performing the audit. So uh, there were one high and two medium vulnerabilities that they discovered. Uh, and we took these vulnerabilities very seriously. Um, they were initially only reported back to the maintainers of the Spark project. We have a security uh, vulnerability reporting process, uh, which is described in the GitHub. Uh, and essentially, uh, these kinds of security vulnerabilities, we ask uh, anyone who finds them to, to send an email to the security email address that we have on the GitHub repo, uh, which gives the maintainers an opportunity to uh, evaluate whether or not uh, there is a vulnerability and what the potential impact of that is, as well as developing some patches to try to fix those vulnerabilities and figuring out what affected versions are out there. Um, so these are the two vulnerabilities that we filed CVEs for. Um, you're more than welcome to go onto the GitHub repo. Um, we've published GitHub security advisories for both of these vulnerabilities, which describe the issues in a lot more depth uh, and also refer to the fixes which were applied to all the affected versions. So I'll just briefly cover what the vulnerabilities were that the um, audit uncovered. So the first one here, legacy node API allows impersonation. Um, so there were, there's a, an existing set of APIs that came out before the current V1 API layer, uh, which was introduced in uh, late last year. Uh, and one of those APIs was called the node API. This was something that the Spire agent uh, used to um, attest itself to the Spire server and in a sense, prove itself that it's a valid agent in the infrastructure. And uh, there was one path uh, available where if an actor was able to obtain an agent SVID, meaning it was able to successfully attest to the server, um, it could potentially request uh, SVIDs for identities that it wasn't uh, allowed to serve based on the uh, registration metadata registered in Spire server. Um, so that was one of the vulnerabilities. And then the second vulnerability was around Spiffy ID paths. Um, so Spiffy IDs, as you probably know, if you're familiar with um, Spiffy, they are uh, designed as URIs. Um, so in the URI specification, there, um, there's no restriction on like Unicode characters or um, selected characters um, that are like punctuation marks and such that uh, those kinds of characters can be represented through this percent encoding mechanism. And uh, there, it turns out that there, it's really hard to uh, uniformly handle those kinds of uh, sequences and URIs uh, across different languages, across different libraries. Uh, and so there, there were some inconsistencies with how those URIs were being handled. Um, so effectively, uh, we decided to amend the Spiffy specification to disallow the use of Unicode characters, as well as um, restrict the ASCII characters that could be used to a limited set um, to try to prevent these sort of issues where like Spiffy IDs could be interpreted in multiple ways, depending on the URI library or implementation used. 
Um, so as I said, we released new versions with fixes for all these um, vulnerabilities, and we published uh, the results of the vulnerabilities and patches into the Spire GitHub. And if you're interested in reading through the audit itself, um, that is also published as a PDF on the readme file for the Spire repository in GitHub. Okay, so I wanna kind of walk through the releases in the last year and just highlight some of the notable accomplishments in the project. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the 0.12.0 release, which came out last December. So as I mentioned before, um, Spire introduced a whole new set of APIs called the V1 APIs, uh, which just brought a lot of consi more consistency to the API design uh, across the board. And so those APIs effectively replaced the uh, initial set of APIs in um, the 0 0.12.0 release. Um, so Spire started using all of those APIs internally. Uh, we also introduced significant improvements to the agent sync operation, uh, which um, to describe that in a little more detail, um, the agent sync essentially, uh, it, it's an operation where the agent very frequently every five seconds requests all of the registrations uh, that it's eligible to serve identities for on the host it's running on. And that operation used to take a lot, a lot of time with a um, larger number of agents or a larger number of registrations uh, in Spire um, because it was using dynamic uh, database queries um, that were not very efficient. So we optimized this whole procedure using an in-memory cache in the server. Uh, and that really uh, sped up the time that it takes uh, to fetch all of this data that the agent needs um, to be very uh, predictable. And then we also introduced support for the Envoy SDS v3 API in Spire Agent. So that brings our compatibility to latest versions of Envoy. And then in March of this year, um, this is when we released all of the security fixes that we just talked about. And then in 0 0.12.2, uh, this was released in April of this year. And some of the noteworthy things to point out here, uh, there was a new server key manager plugin created, uh, which uses AWS key management service. Um, so this allows you to manage all of Spire's private keys and signings in a key management service in AWS. Uh, there was also a new plugin added for the Spire server to use GCP CAS as the upstream authority. Uh, so it allows you to chain to CAS managed uh, chains of trust. And then in 0.12.3, uh, there was support added into the Kubernetes workload registrar for registering workload entries in Spire that need to federate with other trust domains. And this uh, was released in May of this year. Okay, and then the big one is 1.0.0, which was released in July of this year. So a lot of things went into 1.0.0. Uh, one of the major things that happened was that there was a re big refactoring of how the protobuf uh, definitions are managed in Spire. Um, previously, Spire used to be a single repository with two Go modules. Uh, one was the core Spire module, and then the second was a protobuf module. Uh, so any API clients uh, could take dependency on that proto module. Um, that proto module contained protobuf definitions for both like the API layer, as well as uh, plugin uh, SDK protos. Um, so it was kind of overloaded with a couple of different things. So we've decided to refactor that uh, into separate GitHub repositories for those uh, API and plugin SDKs. Uh, and those are called Spire API SDK and Spire plugin SDK. And those are both in the Spiffy organization in GitHub. We also added support for versioned plugins. Um, so if we need to change the plugin interfaces in Spire, we have an effective way to do that now through versioning. Uh, there's also support added for a cert manager upstream authority plugin. Um, so if you wanted to use cert manager as your chain of trust uh, for the upstream uh, for Spire, that's now possible. 
Uh, there's also new commands added to the Spire server CLI for banning agents and counting some of the resources tracked by Spire, like agents and um, entries and bundles, uh, which used to be kind of an expensive thing to calculate if you had a larger scale deployment because you had to list all of those resources and all their data, um, which could take a while and was kind of intense on the database. Uh, now this is kind of an optimized uh, command, which does that all in the database. Um, doesn't require transmitting a lot of data. Um, there is a new authentication method added to the Vault up, upstream authority plugin in the server to use Kubernetes-based authentication with service count tokens. Um, the server now supports uh, the latest configuration for the Spiffy Federation feature, uh, which was added last year. And the uh, Spire agent can now provide trust bundles um, to unregistered callers via a new RPC, which was defined in the Spiffy workload API spec. Um, so if you have workloads which need to verify SVIDs, but themselves don't really need to use SVIDs for authentication to other workloads, um, though you don't need to register those verification um, workloads anymore in Spire, you can use this unauthenticated unregistered API to just obtain the bundles. Also, um, the server and the agent now implement the standard gRPC health service. So this improves the health check story for Spire. In 1.0.1, we added an LDAV ID based TPM node attester plugin, uh, which uh, basically uses a proof of possession and proof of residency um, challenges to verify that a host is issued by um, or has a TPM that's issued by a trusted vendor. Um, so this improves like private cloud kind of attestation uh, if you're using TPMs. And then we've also had node attestation for AWS VMs across multiple AWS accounts using AWS IAM role assumption. In 1.0.2, we added experimental support for defining authorization policies in the server using OPA. Um, so this kind of changes the mechanism that the server uses to authorize inbound callers. Um, there's also audit logging added to the server API layer. So all calls to server APIs um, are now audit logged. Um, the support for the Spiffy certificate validator um, was added to the Envoy SDS v3 API and Spire agent to enable federated Spiffy authentication. And we there are also support added to the Kubernetes workload registrar for identity templates for Spiffy ID paths. So you can now dynamically uh, generate Spiffy ID paths based on attributes of Kubernetes pods, for example. All right, and just wanna quickly go over what's coming next. So in the near term and medium term, we're looking at it, continuing to simplify the experience in Kubernetes to make it more turnkey. And this uh, applies to both how Spire is deployed as well as um, the way that registrations are created for workloads in, uh, in Kubernetes. We want to uh, continue to focus on how we can support workloads which don't run in an environment where a Spire agent can run. Uh, in the classic example of this is like a serverless environment like AWS Lambda. Um, there is ongoing work to provide a new API which allows like a trusted uh, process to delegate the um, uh, to delegate SVIDs to other workloads running on the same host. Um, in the past, this has only been contained within the Spire agent, but now uh, we're allowing like trusted proxies, for example, to um, be able to do this kind of issuance of identity as well. Uh, we are looking to provide a new API to programmatically configure federation relationships. Uh, we're exploring ways that we can uh, do better verification of binary signing um, to uh, use things like Tuf, for example. And then we want to uh, provide ways to uh, connect to GCP um, using secretless authentication with OIDC Federation. And in the long term, we're looking at how do we effectively do key revocation and forced rotation of identity also secretless off to Azure with OIDC Federation. 
uh, continuing to iterate on our health check subsystem and improve our error messages to be more actionable. So that's all I had today. Thanks for joining and have a great production identity day.